Welcome back. You got Will and I, man, here from the Block Runner Metazone, Rovi and M Scrub, and today we got some NAT reactions. All right, yes, so, sir. So this dropped yesterday. Yeah, man. And it all started with a track tweet. He said, yeah. Benny comes in with DMT NAT on tap protocol is now being indexed by track. Mm -hmm. Endpoints are live and will also be available with the track core release, of course. Of course, of course, of course. So this is the open source version of the track indexing. Yeah. This means that field type 11, which is the bits field indexing hex patterns and also the numeric patterns mm -hmm. of the DMT spec is fully supported. More fields to more field types to come. Yeah. So we were, we had the, I guess, pleasure and, uh, luxurious experience to, uh, have front row seats to watching Benny kind of architect all of this support. Oh yeah. You know? And I, I put out a tweet like mid like witness of it all. It's like, damn, this, this feels like some real block science happening. Like this is yeah. real block engineering. This is interesting. I feel like this has really never been done before. Yeah. Because it hasn't really. I don't think anybody's ever had a, a real reason to, to like tinker around this much with the data layer of Bitcoin. No, and what motivated us and inspired us was Bitmap because Bitmap was the first non-arbitrary token. Yeah, so yeah, Benny believed in that vision and the, the, he has a very deep understanding of what it is DMT and NATs represent and he, he he jumped on the opportunity right away. Yeah. Right, and so this has been, you know, a couple of months, several months maybe, like yeah. in the works, even though it feels like it just got like a light switch was turned on. Right. It's been a lot of like internal, like... uh you know, um, tinkering to figure this out. And it's finally here, right? But uh, yeah, as we go it, through. it took us a while to come up with this framework. I mean, yeah, it took it took developments of like parent child and providence um, attributes. Mm -hmm. All these things are needed in order to like deploy something like this. Correct. So yeah, now that the so Benny finally, you know, executed on this and the endpoints are out there. So that's basically the signal to the world. It's like, all right, here it is. Uh, if you want to support this, go have at it. And yeah. Of course, Ordinal's wallet. They jumped in. As they do. <laughs> Fucking uh, the rabbit in the race every single time. Yeah. Remember runes? Same thing. He's like, Same oh, thing. you want to publish a blog? Yeah. In a couple hours. It's like, here's go. the runes token. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, in proper Ordinal's wallet fashion, all the action of day one in the NAT space yeah. is on Ordinal's wallet. So yeah. what's happening, dude? So as soon as um, Benny hit me up, he was like, okay, the endpoints are live. I quickly hit up Ordinal's wallet and say, endpoints are live. They knew exactly what to do. Yeah. They're like, hey, do you have a logo for Tap DMT? I was like, I sure do. Let's, let's zoom in on that bad boy, dude. Look at that. <laughs> dude, it's so clean. It is clean. You know what this looks like? What does it look like? The document of digital matter theory. It was like that circle. <laughs> Let me see if I could bring it up real quick. Yeah. That definitely, that definitely, like, was, was that intentional? Like, I think we were going through different. Yeah, look, look at that. that. Yeah. You're definitely very proud of this one, aren't you? Yeah, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it is very representative of what it is the, like, uh, NATs represent. Like, the, obviously, the core of it is Bitcoin. Yeah, this is Bitcoin. Yeah. These are all the non-arbitrary token nodes out there. It's the new digital substance layer that, again, is it's, it's tapping into the substrate layer of the data. Yeah. Of a Bitcoin block. That's what this uh, this icon represents. Uh, NAT being the first like utilizer, mm -hmm. the first deployer, the first deployment of this like new this new understanding, right? So yeah, you know, that that's our artistic rendering of, yeah. of that, you know. Yeah, so twenty four Bitcoin in volume in less than twenty four hours, dude. Mm. That's insane. That's over a million dollars yeah. in volume. And we got new holders, right? Um, yeah, so <clears throat> the user experience is a little different than what people are going to expect on Mscribe once, you know, so deployment, Mscribe should be live pretty soon. Uh, it, it's it's a little bit different as far as, like, how you're going to manage your yeah. non-arbitrary tokens and such. Yeah, because Mscribe is dedicated to, like, the structure of Bitmap and Bitmap being the non-arbitrary token and supporting additional non-arbitrary tokens on, on Mscribe, mm -hmm. it's going to look a little bit different, but the marketplace experience is going to be very familiar. Pretty much, yeah. Right, so so, so what? I'm in 24 Bitcoin, who cares, <laughs> right? Well, so let's uh, let's take a step back, go to Ordinal's wallet, and let's look at the the seven day volume and in, in, uh, in these Ordinals. Yeah. 
So we got tap with 24 Bitcoin. The next one, which is based for Bitcoin. Yeah. And this is seven day volume, dude. Yeah. We're about to not even at 24 hours, to be honest. Yeah. Or are we? No, no, it's definitely no we're not. not. We're getting close though. But nonetheless, yeah. So this is, I, I don't know. I, I want to say like this exceeded our expectation, but at the same time, I, I kind of expected this. Yeah. To be honest. You know, yeah. That's what yeah. Ronald's wallet asked me. It's like, Hey, what do you, what do you guys think? It's like, I was like, you know, this is, imp I, I'm impressed, but yeah, yet expected. I didn't expect, I didn't expect it to block out in seven days as it did, mm -hmm. you know, a month ago or so. That was totally unexpected. And I didn't expect like 11,000 people were going to actually, yeah. I guess, identify the value that we have and, you know, and want to participate this yeah. quickly. Because it's, I mean, we've seen other uh, new emerging ecosystems in the past with BRC20s and stuff. There was a much, there was a bigger lag phase as far as like, you know, bringing that core, mm -hmm. that core community together to kind of support this ecosystem, right? And, and of yeah. course, BRC20s was much earlier in the Ordinals space. So yeah. It makes sense that it took them a little bit longer to kind of like get off the ground. Yeah. So. Yeah. Agreed. But yeah, this is a market activity I was kind of anticipating. So it's good to see. Yeah. So let's zoom out a little bit more and just take a look at the activity on Magic Eden. So Magic Eden does not support tap tokens or NAT or anything like that. But it's good to see, you know, what the volume is. So Node Monkey's 21 mm. in the last 24 hours. So, yeah. so uh, tap NAT tokens are above that. Very so, cool, dude. So, so this is like the most, yeah, in terms of volume of all ordinals. Yeah, and people are taking notice. Like, uh, I guess uh, so. This is another introduction of a new asset class. I mean, we've seen this tons of times in the ordinal space. So your choice now, as participants of this, in these navigators of this invisible hand, this yeah. force of the market, your your choice is either to help it like be, push forward or just push it back right yeah. that that is the task of all market participants right that's right that's right so people are the option is now like you know in your hands you want to fade this or not right yeah so speaking of participants yeah our friends across the pond <laughs> are here with their laptops <laughs> yeah these guys are pushing that hand all the way forward as hard as they can it yeah. looks like fucking chain smoking and all dude <laughs> just to keep the energy up the energy levels up. You cannot miss any minute in these markets, dude. You yeah, never you know. cannot. You cannot. This is pretty cool to see too. That was pretty surreal. Yeah, and uh, I remember seeing this with uh, bitmaps and BRC twenty tokens. You too. Yeah, to see that happen to NATs, dude. That that definitely again, it made me feel like some type of way. It's like wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We might have finally like you know, uh, caused some damage here in in Web three in the crypto space. Yeah. I mean, if you don't know anything about our background, we've been dabbling for four years. That's right. Metaverse, uh, mainly, mm -hmm. uh, you know, NFTs early to the NFT ecosystem, early to the metaverse space, mm -hmm. and of course early to ordinals. But uh, this is, I think, uh, as big of a market penetration. I think. Yeah, it, it's it's really is a big deal, and we're gonna show you how big of a deal it is here yeah. in a second. But Jake time chimes in a million in NFT volume on ordinals wallet first twenty four hours trading. So. It's uh, getting recognized. Um, I think everybody, any, if you're in Ordinals and you're on Twitter, you've probably seen NAT already. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so I want to talk about this tweet. Cubs, NAT was listed 20 hours ago and just crossed a million in volume, and this is the highest on-chain fungible token on Bitcoin in the past 24 hours. Uh, is the first inflation, NAT is the first inflationary token on Bitcoin. NAT is arguably the first smart contract standard on Bitcoin, bullish. Mm is an understatement, sell your bags to me <laughs> on Ordinal's wallet. Yeah. Um, so smart contracts probably pushing a little bit too far, just a little bit, but there is definitely logic that you can take advantage of by creating NATs. Agreed. I think that that was like our biggest realization. And it's why that's what drove us to have, you know, collaborating with Benny and mm -hmm. tap because that is the extension protocol that enables things like a, an emission, an emit, a, a supply emission to even occur in the first place. You cannot do that. That's true. Right. And the supply emission is not arbitrary. That's the point. Yeah. We didn't just come up with like a, a yeah, just it's 2% <laughs> inflation. It's like, I mean, that is what smart contracts enable, right? Like you yeah. get the program that, that logic That's true within your token, uh, distribution mechanism, whatever. Yeah. If you want to schedule like a one year, ha like happening, you could do that with a smart contract. Right? Yeah. But the thing that's interesting and like completely new is like those, those like function derivatives, they exist already on chain through patterns. Yeah. 
Like you can derive that functionality through identifying that this, this, this pattern occurrence can be utilized in a way yeah. that now I, I can generate a token that's completely non-arbitrary. Mm -hmm. The sequence of events that occur on chain is what's going to kind of like execute that logic and that function. That's right. We don't have a name for that yet. Yeah. <laughs> it's definitely not a smart contract. Maybe it's a smart pattern. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. I like that. You like it? It's good. <laughs> Thanks, dude. That's <laughs> good. Uh, all right. So there's a couple more tweets. So Mattyverse, you know, clutch as usual. New video dropped. People were asking me. So I made a video showing uh, how to check your NAT balance. How to inscribe a transfer and listen on owners wallet. Don't forget to subscribe. Subscribe to this this gentleman here. He's killing it, and uh, it's a good representation of how how to do everything as far as NATs go. Yeah, uh, yeah, definitely. I mean, of course, participating. I mean, it's literally we're still in the final hours of day one. <laughs> this thing couldn't be any you couldn't be any earlier <laughs> than you are yeah. right now if you're paying attention. Right. So again, you're going to have, you're going to deal with this just like the rare sat community dealt with. You're going to get people who are going to attempt to mock you for even like you know, mentioning this stuff. Yeah. They're going to like claim you're, you're one of the crazy ones. Like yeah. you're an idiot. You're, you're getting scammed. Yeah. All that shit. Like that's so typical. Right? Yeah. But yeah. to me, those are like the bullish indicators. These, if, if you know what you're doing, these are indicators mm -hmm. of good activity, right? This yeah. is like, this is projecting into the future what is supposed to happen. Because people are naturally afraid of change and New disruption. Stuff. Right. It's just programmed into like the majority of us. You arbitrarily chose the bits field. Yeah. Right? You, you, I mean, they're going to find every like vertical of attack that they can come up with. But it's, it's weird that they say that when at the same time, physics, the mm. names of laws of physics, they're all arbitrary. Mm. Right? Mm. Hydrogen, the name is arbitrary. Mm -hmm. Right? There's a lot of aspects of our existence that are based on non-arbitrary elements such as physics mm. with arbitrary names. Mm -hmm. That is DMT, mm. right? We're giving arbitrary names to non-arbitrary aspects of Bitcoin. Correct. I mean, I don't understand how that's difficult to grasp. I think, well, in the early stage, it just is for some people. And that's okay. It, this is how, um, you know, new ideas, new markets, whatever. This is how they, the maturation cycle, the beginning, you know, the early... What do they call them? Like early adopters? Yeah, the early adopters. They are going to have that advantage because now you're going to be able to utilize this new paradigm, this new ability. Yeah. Incorporate this into your tokenomics design, and, and you know if you're building a game, you're building something on bitmap. Right. Now you have this new vertical to experiment with, and to you know potentially lead to some sort of sustainable outcome for your digital economy. Right. Right. As opposed to just being pigeonholed to one, like everything's going to be a BRC20. Right. You know, everything is just like flat and static and like non, non robust. Yeah. Like, you know, let's just keep it at that. No, that's, that's not how the digital economy is going to manifest. Agreed. You know? uh, so I wanted to show this other tweet. So Sergeant Ponzi here, he says, NET is the first fungible token on Bitcoin with an inflationary supply emission schedule. It could be seen as the first smart contract on Bitcoin. So at present, each new block prints the following. One bitmap equals about 150 bucks. 450 million NETs is about $50. Mm. And then he says, I predict in the next three months, we may see this at $500 to $1,000 worth of tokens minted, minted per block. This creates additional MEV on chain to mint these new blocks. Game theory on chain upcoming. Mm. Minting pools are already mining off their rare sats, another non-arbitrary asset. Mm -hmm. on Bitcoin instead of just selling the BTC on the markets. And the basic premise of this thesis is we are seeing various revenue streams upon open up for the BTC miners, which at present are the following increased revenue from ordinals, rare sats, which are being auctioned off and various non-arbitrary tokens gaining popularity. Mm. Long story short, miners have a vested interest in pumping our bags indefinitely. So I said, interesting and reasonable game thing. <coughs> Yeah, I think this is very reasonable because we've already seen it, right? Like he's saying yeah. with rare sats, we're, we've see, yeah. we're seeing it with bitmap. Like this is an expected outcome for sure. And that's going to contribute to the value perspective. Dude, overall. imagine that non-arbitrary tokens is what funds like miners. Well, like, I mean, we're, we're, we're in that new, that new paradigm, that new narrative paradigm where Bitcoin needs to get its shit together because after this next happening like that, that. Yeah, the subsidies become less valuable potentially like not the sustainability mechanism anymore to secure the network so what else is it right now ordinals obviously is the number one candidate mm -hmm. 
and all these new va- value derivatives that are emerging from within ordinals. That's right. That's you right. know, NATs being one of them. Bitmaps, right. rare sats, all these. Yeah, this is. These are real product incentives for these miners to actually 100%. continue their operation, right? Yeah, that's so interesting. Yeah. Agreed. <laughs> <laughs> Hence our focus on all this stuff, dude. Like yeah. We're watching all this kind of just lay out in real time. It's crazy. Speaking of focus, Mscribe is about to receive an update to kind of support everything. Um, so what, what I did here is I clicked on elements, and then so let's, let's actually kind of go through this. So the first element kind of supported is called DMT. There, the full list of elements supported will be listed here. Yeah. You're going to see the 24-hour trading, the total market caps of the element itself, right? The element will spawn tokens. If you add the market caps of all those tokens, it will represent just like a market cap of the actual element. It's just informational. It doesn't really mean anything. Um, and then so you click on this, and then you see all the available NAT tokens. There's a few listed here. There's actually a lot more than this, but you can see NAT here and you can see BMT here. Mm. And uh, so we got holders for NAT is about 11,381. This has grown since it started at yeah. 10,600 and change. Yeah, this is definitely being indexed because that number just keeps updating. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, the most interesting number to me here is 17 holders of bitmap token, mm. right? BMT. And so what this is, this is interesting to me because it's very hard to, to generate a child inscription of a, of a BMT token from a bitmap. It is. Cause you, you got to go to a, you know, a website and then you have to submit your BMT or your uh, bitmap and you know, you have to go through the provenance uh, the process, the protocol. And so yeah. people have actually done it. Right. It's just, it's just an added friction layer, which is why not, I don't think there's a big rush yet. And it's like a, Let's wait around and see, I guess, if it gets further adoption than, you know, because it is a provenance model, which mm-hmm. is different than what the NAT token is. That was like an open, like, like token launch. Mm-hmm. There was no provenance requirement associated to it. Yep. You know, so, so these are two different models, like literally currently deployed. Yeah. So the way the BMT will work is you'll go to your bitmap and there's going to be a new tab on the right. And you click on that and you'll be able to see all your block drop tokens, including BMT. And That's then you right. can just click on it and scribe it, and now you have your BMT token. On Mscribe, right? Like, so that is the purpose. Right now, it's very difficult. You have to go, f- like, from platform to platform and, you know, interact with all these different composable protocols and such in order yeah. to execute on your uh, your block drop claim, mm-hmm. right? And Mscribe, we're going to make that user experience much more fluid. Yeah. All in one. Uh, so, yeah, it'll be pretty intuitive. Like, I own a bitmap. That is the provenance that's going to kind of, like, Enable me to claim these block drops, whatever is being generated mm-hmm. by the these, community. Yeah, these are digital commodities. We're already getting tons of inquiries from yeah. people who want to create many like resources. Yeah, actual innately present resources within the bitmap like block space. Yep, that can now be you know claimed and, and potentially usable in you know the bitmap economy. Yeah, that was the whole point. We wanted to enable exactly that, and people are already they're getting it. Yeah, they're, they're doing it. They want to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so speaking of, how big is this NET thing, this whole digital matter matter theory thing? Yeah. So we have this little message here from Benny, and he posted this publicly on his Discord. And so he's answering like a bunch of questions here and says, the other fields will come over time. That's like a one to two year mission. Yeah. And so why is it going to take so long, I man? I think it's just, it's a lot of data, dude. It is. It's a lot of data. This is something new. Yeah. Right. It's never been done before. Mm-hmm. We're accessing roughly seven terabytes of Bitcoin data. I know it's like, you know, the meme is like 500 gigabytes to download all of Bitcoin, but that's a compressed space. Yeah. Right. You you uh, uncompress it and you look at the data itself. It's about six to seven terabytes. OK. Yeah. And, and so that data is being accessed and being accessible via these elements. Mm-hmm. And now from this element, you'll be able to generate are non-arbitrary tokens. Yeah. And so to, to make that possible, it's not easy. It, this is a long journey. And this is uh, the first step. And the first step is pretty damn good. Yeah, just having the support of the DMT field for now. And yeah, we, we saw, we witnessed how hard it was for, for Benny to, I guess, like architect all that. Yeah. So yeah, we know it's going to be like a, a large effort and we're going to need contribution from other indexers to kind of support all the different potential patterns that exist. Yeah. There's a lot. Yeah. We're talking about 
a lot of permutations that people can discover <laughs> with these different patterns. Yeah, so that's a big deal, you know. And to me, this is uh, an indication of exactly how much of a paradigm shift this is. We we, we kind of put that in our original documentation, right? Like this is a real fork in the the absolutely the age of cryptocurrency, right? We've yeah. been in an arbitrary pathway for the last fifteen years. This is a real deviation towards a non-arbitrary path. Absolutely, this and, is an actual fork. Yeah, therefore, it's going to be a a large human scale effort to kind of support yeah. all of this this new methodology right so yeah shout out hats to, off to benny yeah to benny for <laughs> putting this together and yeah. you know getting on this uh this journey with us mm -hmm. and he he joined us without like any proof of like this working right and so as soon as it blocked out in seven days he was like all right we're we're, we're all in pretty much yeah all right that's it for us guys i appreciate you guys for watching if we missed anything or if you have any questions hit us up in the comment section below join our discord and uh you know retweet this as well. Appreciate mm -hmm. you guys, and we'll catch you in the next video. Peace.